Hello everyone. Now we're up to layer 4 in the OSI model here, which is the transport layer. But first I'm just going to just jog your memory on the first three layers, just to remind you what they were about. So, layer 1 was the physical layer. Okay, so on the physical layer, that were the things, really, is the cables that have voltages on them. Okay, it could be uh, pulses of light, it could be RF, if you can imagine that's RF coming from an antenna. All the raw stuff that's actually moving from one place to another, that's the physical layer. Okay, then we had the data link layer. Data link. And that was really a half and half sort of layer, where the top half was to do with the software side of things, and the bottom half was really getting ready to put them on that physical layer. So that's really the bridge between the two. Um, the next layer was the network layer. Network. Now the network layer gave us some logical paths between a network over there and a network over there. So it made the virtual circuits, if you like, so that packets, as they are at that layer, can get from one network to another. So that had things like routers and that. Now for layer 4, we are talking about the transport. Now the network layer was concerned in joining the two networks together and giving us a path between them. But it didn't really do anything to make sure packets get there or not. It just provided a route and said, OK, it goes there and it just goes and hopes for the best. Layer 4, though, can have things like uh, error correction, especially with TCP. And the most common protocols you would have heard of that are Layer 4 protocols are TCP or UDP, which, of course, we're going to get right into in future. But just to let you know that they are transport layer protocols. OK, so let's say you've got a couple of hosts. OK, you've got host A. And you've got host B. And we know they've got the uh, network stack there, the whole seven layers. And we've seen down the bottom, we've seen uh, layers one, two, and three on both of them, of course. They're going to have layers one, two, and three. And if traffic's going through from no, either direction, really, but it's going from host A to host B, it goes down its stack right down to the wire or wireless or whatever else it's going from. Then goes up the stack to host B. Now, when I say the host here, I'm talking about the software that's running, okay? They've got some program that's going to use the network, so that's running on, on host A and host B. But the thing is, there might be more than one program running, okay? They might have um, a number of different, different programs all sending data and things down here and going through the same network stack, and they're going over here, and they're going up here. Okay. okay, so you might have a number of different data sources that plan to go from host A to host B. Okay, and you might have um, a voice call on one, you might have web traffic on the other, but it's still going from the IP address of host A to host B. So we need to distinguish what's where. So within layer 4, on, uh, on both sides here, we have things called ports. So an application, when it starts on host A, let's say you've got application one, some, some program running, okay? And it'll use one of the ports at layer four to define itself so when it goes through the network at the other end, it can map it to the right program. So at the other end, when the traffic comes back, it'll go, oh, your port, this number, you with this application, okay? Because when you've got applications over here and number one, up here, you've got lots of applications running. You need to need to be able to define which one goes to where. So, so let's say over on host B, you've got that application one, you've got that application two, application three. Okay. When they do their data transfers, application two will use a different port number, go through the network, and it pops out at application two. Okay, so that's what the transport layer is conceptually about. It provides a path between not only the networks, but the actual applications that it's going to be going to in the network stack of each host. It'll also, depending on which protocol it is, like TCP or UDP, it'll also ask for retransmissions of, of lost packets, okay? If packets are gone and they don't, they don't know where they went, layer 3 won't itself really ask for them again, but the TCP running at layer 4 will. So UDP won't, but TCP will, but it's all to do with how you implement your um, transport layer. So I'll leave that there for now, but of course in the next video we'll go on to layer 5. So until then, take it easy.